On the 1st of December 1985, two homeless teenagers broke into her father's new Milford, Connecticut home and stabbed him to death. His neck was slit and blood coated the walls, floor and ceiling. Police quickly apprehended Ricky Birch and Sean Henning for the killing, and a cursory examination of the men revealed not a shred of blood on either, and no DNA evidence could link the men to the crime scene. But at the trial, rising star forensic scientist Henry Lee, who would go on to gain notoriety for his work on some of America's most infamous murder cases, revealed a smoking gun. A bloody towel that the men had used to clean themselves up before fleeing. This proved vital in the case and resulted in the pair being sentenced to prison where they remain today. The problem is, Henry Lee had lied. The stain thought to be blood was never proven to be, and after 34 years, the legitimacy of the case is being brought into question. So, how many cases did this celebrity forensic scientist botch? I was born in China, long time ago. Anybody older than me here? I was born in 1938. It's hard not to like Henry Chang Yu Li. His cheery smile and old man charm succeed a turbulent life. Born in Kiangsu, China in 1938, he fled the raging Chinese civil war at a young age and arrived in Taiwan in the late 40s. This wouldn't discourage Li, as he sought a degree in police science from the Taiwan Central Police College and went on to become the youngest police captain in the history of Taiwan at the age of 22. He emigrated to the US in 1965, and with $50 in his pocket and no English skills, he would wait tables and teach karate on the weekends to support his family. Eventually, he was able to attend the John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York, where he earned his bachelor's in forensic science, and later added to his academic portfolio with a master's and PhD in biochemistry from New York University. This proved a huge opportunity for Lee, and after a short stint as a professor at the University of New Haven, he was appointed as the Chief Criminalist and Director of the State Police Forensic Laboratory of Connecticut in 1979. It was from this position that he springboarded into the role of superstar forensic scientist, lending his investigative services to some of America's most grisly murder cases. Henry Lee's first big case was the 1986 Connecticut wood chipper murder of Hell Crafts. The prosecution alleged that her airline pilot husband, Richard Crafts, had killed Hell and fed her corpse through a wood chipper. Without a body, the case seemed stagnant as the prime evidence, her body, had been destroyed and the only real evidence, receipts for the rental of a wood chipper, were purely circumstantial. That was until Henry Lee was brought in to lead the investigation. His team found human tissue, a crown for a tooth, hair, and O-type blood, the same as Hell's, in the nearby river. Furthermore, they fed a frozen pig into the wood chipper and found similar shredding patterns to the body parts found in the river. This helped determine that Hell had in fact been shredded, and Richard was sentenced to 50 years in prison. With the help of Lee, this was the first murder conviction without a body in the state of Connecticut and solidified him and his field's value in extraordinary murder cases. It was at the OJ trial that Lee gained international stardom. As a star witness brought in by the defense, he was quizzed on the LAPD's handling of blood samples in an attempt to bolster the defense's claim that they had mishandled or tampered with evidence. With such high profile jobs, Lee was on a roll. But it's also where the problem started. Do you have anything else before we launch into that? Yes, very briefly. Uh, I found a brief this morning with respect to the on the stand, Lee testified that blood smears on evidence bags proved that blood taken from the crime scene, where Simpson had supposedly stabbed Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman to death in 1994, had been transferred while wet, a mishandling of evidence. When asked about his opinion of this by the defense's forensic expert, Barry Sheck, Henry Lee uttered the ambiguous line, the only opinion I can give under these circumstances, something wrong. 
Chris Darden, co-prosecutor alongside Marsha Clark during the OJ trial, claimed in a statement to Natalie O'Neill of the Daily Beast that the defense had told Lee to use the vague but memorable phrase during a court recess. It was a stretch. He shouldn't have said anything up there that wasn't based in science, Darden said. But he has a whole shtick and juries like him. Now, it's important to note Henry Lee did not lie. But his language in the courtroom planted doubt, and doubt is arguably what let OJ walk free. Morally, his actions in this case were sleazy at best. More egregious examples of malpractice can be found littered throughout Lee's career, both preceding and succeeding the OJ trial, the most recent being his actions as a defence investigator for Phil Spector, the record producer accused of killing actress Lana Clarkson in 2003. On February 3rd, 2003, Phil Spector brought home the striking actress and model Lena Clarkson from a restaurant on the iconic Sunset Strip in LA. The two rode in Spector's limousine and were dropped off at Spector's home while the driver waited in the car. About an hour later, according to the driver, a loud gunshot was heard, followed by Spector staggering out the house with a gun. I think I just shot her, he proclaimed. However, when the investigation into her death began, Spector quickly changed his story claiming she had kissed the gun and it accidentally went off. This raised concerns and Spectre was soon made a prime suspect. Hired by the defence, Henry Lee made a visit to the crime scene shortly after to investigate and collect evidence, which he should have reported to the court. According to colleagues of Lee, however, one piece of evidence, an acrylic fingernail thought to belong to Lena Clarkson, was taken by Lee and never reported, and instead hidden or destroyed. This could have been critical evidence according to the prosecution, as a bullet trace on the nail would have proven that Clarkson was fighting against a gun being rammed into her mouth. This would be of significance, as in 2007 a mistrial occurred from a 10-2 hung jury in favour of guilty. Eventually, Spectre was convicted in the 2009 retrial, but the point still stands. Could the nail have been the missing piece to convince the remaining jurors? What if, in the absence of that evidence, Spectre was let free? Henry Lee, whether intentional or not, had spoiled evidence, and the potential ramifications where a guilty man walks free and a family gets no justice for the loss of their daughter. The reverse is also true. Henry Lee might have contributed to innocent men being sentenced, such as in the case of David Weinberg, who was convicted of the 1984 killing of Joyce Stochmal in 1989. Weinberg, then 26, was arrested months after police found Joyce Stochmar's body with 17 stab wounds floating in the Housatonic River. Police found a bloody knife belonging to Weinberg, and his girlfriend, suffering from schizophrenia, told police that Weinberg had led them to a burn site after Stochmar vanished, which police used to link Weinberg to the pit where Stochmar's belongings were found burned. Henry Lee was brought in to testify on behalf of the state, and on the stand, he claimed that blood tests on the knife were inconclusive on whether it was human blood or not, and that three hairs similar to Stochmar's were found in Weinberg's car. However, it was later revealed that blood tests on the knife had proven that the blood was certainly not human, and two of the three hairs were not Stochmar's, and the third was inconclusive. Despite this, Weinberg was convicted thanks in part to Lee's testimony, which seemed to prove almost without a doubt that Weinberg had done it, when in reality no physical evidence could link Weinberg to Stochmau's murder. Weinberg was released early in 2017 after the Innocence Project brought to light these discrepancies in the case against him. That isn't to say his conviction was overturned. He is still a convicted killer to this day. But the facts as they were presented by Lee and the prosecution were misleading, and justice must be served without a reasonable doubt. And now finally onto the case of Sean Henning and Ricky Birch. The Supreme Court of Connecticut deemed that the men had not received fair trials and ordered retrials. Henning was released on parole in November and Birch maintains his innocence. This was following new DNA tests that signalled towards a mystery female killer and further proved that Lee's testimony was utterly false. Henning said in a recent interview that every one of the jurors were glued to every word he was saying. It was nonsense, but they were eating it up. Alluring to Lee's personality being more important in securing a conviction for the prosecutors who hired him than actual evidence and facts. Even Henry Lee himself expressed regret for the case, saying that the district attorney had pressured him into presenting the bloody towel that in reality had no blood on it as proof. He said that a chemical presumptive test, or a field test, indicated the substance could be blood, but the district attorney said it was not important and thus no further testing was done. Dennis Santore, the DA in question, refutes this accusation. Lee added, I don't think I helped anybody. The victim's family think I am incompetent. It's like a nightmare. 
Nevertheless, Lee's testimony had put innocent men behind bars for half a century, and those are years that these men will never get back. All said, perhaps the problem with forensic science is larger than Henry Lee. Through the years, many forms of forensic science have been discredited, from bite mark evidence to hair particle analysis. As well as this, there is a human element, a subconscious bias of us versus them, where a forensic scientist, hired by the state or the defense, feels as if they are part of that team, and may not be as objective as one should be. Henry Lee has worked thousands of cases throughout his career, and most have not been discredited. Perhaps the problem is not with Dr. Lee, but with a system obsessed with finding someone to convict, and one that trusts too greatly an imperfect field of science that is ever evolving and mired by fallible human nature.